Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today, Adobe updated Lightroom Classic to version 11. This, the latest version of Lightroom Classic, has what I consider a major new feature. In this video, I'm going to demo that major new feature. This update, like most Lightroom updates, includes bug fixes, new camera and lens support, and some new minor features that I'll cover in a future video. But today, I wanna talk about and demo this major new feature. Now, when you do update your Lightroom Classic to version 11, it needs to update or upgrade the catalog. I don't think you really have anything to worry about this because it doesn't update the existing catalog. It copies the existing, existing catalog and upgrades the copy. So you'll always have your older catalog to fall back on if you need to use a previous version of Lightroom. So I don't think you have anything to worry about when you upgrade your catalog. Now once you do upgrade the catalog and open up Lightroom Classic and go to the develop module, you'll notice on the right hand side the tools have changed. You still have the crop tool, the spot removal tool, the red eye reduction tool, but then you have this circle over here called masking. So you don't have any longer sitting in this toolbar, the linear gradient, radial gradient, and brush. But if you click on masking, you'll notice they're there. Brush, linear gradient, radial gradient. You also have some new stuff. You have select subject and select sky. And then at the bottom you have the older color range masking, luminance range masking, and where applicable, the depth range mask will be active. You can see it's grayed out here because this image does not have any depth info in it. Now, what I want to talk about are these two new features up here, select subject and select sky. This is borrowed from Photoshop. With this, with a click of the button, I could select the sky. For example, on this image here, let's say I just want to do adjustments to the sky and nothing else. All I need to do is click on select sky and Lightroom will automatically find the sky and it will have the overlay there. That red overlay is telling you that's what I think the sky is. Did a pretty good job. Now any adjustments I do will just get applied to the sky. For example, if I go to exposure and you'll, you could turn the overlay off by also just by clicking there. But if you leave it on, as soon as you move a slider, it turns off. So if I go to exposure and take that down, you can see it's affecting the sky. Now, maybe for this image, I want to add some contrast to the sky. Some, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna push sliders around. I'm not really doing this to make it look beautiful, just so you could see how it works. So I did some adjustments to the sky. I wanna do adjustments now to everything else except the sky. To do that, click on create new mask. We're gonna select the sky again. Let it find its sky. It's gonna put that overlay there. Then where it says sky one right here, you see these three dots? Click on that and invert it. And when you invert it, now the overlay is on everything but the sky. Any adjustments I do here will just be to that area. And maybe I wanna brighten it up and I wanna add some saturation. And maybe I add some texture there or something like that. So you can see how that works. Very, very easy to use. Let's do another example. I have this image here of this bird. Now the bird is an obvious subject. So this works on non-human subjects. It also works on humans, but it also works on non-human subjects. I've tried it with birds. I've tried it with flowers. I've tried it with artwork like statues that are in the middle of fields. It, it found the subject every single time. In this case here, I'm going to click on select subject and you'll see it'll find the bird. It puts the mask over the bird. It also over selected a little bit maybe if you want to consider it over selecting it selected this branch in underneath the bird but i want that selected as well because what i want to do is dark in the background and i don't need this branch dark i just need the background dark so i'm going to let that stay as is then what i'm going to do is going to go over here and i'm going to go to select subject and i'll click on these three dots and i'm going to invert it now you'll see the mat the mask overlay is on the background it's on some of the branches but that's right we're going to go to the exposure slider, and as soon as I start moving it left, look at that. Making that bird stand out more, and I think it looks pretty good 
with this branch included in the mask, or excluded in this case because we're actually adjusting the background. So you can see how easy it is to find the subject. Now let's do something a little more complicated. I have this image here. I have actually three different kind of areas I want to adjust. I want to adjust the sky. I want to adjust the subject. The subject is the lighthouse. And I want to adjust everything else beside the lighthouse and the sky. So what we could do is let's um, select the sky first. All right. I don't know. We'll select subject first. We'll go in order. So it selected the subject. Now notice it over selected a little bit here. It has the ground to my right of the uh, lighthouse. If I want to get rid of that, just click on subtract. And you can see that we could do a lot of things here. I'm just going to get a brush. And now it's a subtract brush. And the bracket keys adjust the size of the brush, right bracket key larger, left bracket key smaller. You also have brush attributes right here at the top. But in this case here, I'll just remove the mask, or that red overlay in this case, from that area there. I just want to affect the lighthouse. So I did that. Now, what do I want to do with the lighthouse? I don't know. Let's, um, let's add some clarity to it and add some texture to it and add some saturation. All right. So it just affected the lighthouse. And you can see, I'll just show you. I'll move the exposure slider around. You can see it's just affecting the lighthouse. All right. Now, let's select the sky. So we'll go up here, create new mask, select sky. And it did a pretty good job. It just selected the sky. Now here, I don't know, we'll add some contrast. We'll add some clarity, some texture. We'll really bring out the drama in that sky. All right. So there's that. Now I want to affect everything else except the sky in the lighthouse. To do that, we're going to add a new mask. We're going to select the sky again. Let it select the sky. All right, now we're going to invert this because I want to do everything else, right? So we'll click the, right, these three little dots. We'll invert it. Okay, now it's selected everywhere, but it also selected the lighthouse, and I don't want it to select the lighthouse. So we'll click on Subtract, and we want to select the subject. Subtract, subtract from Mask with Select Subject. Do that, and it got rid of the subject, which is the, the lighthouse, but... As it did before, it also grabbed this area over here. So I can add to the selection if I want to. Click the Add button, get a brush. Again, same thing as before, and we'll just paint it in. I'm just going to do a sloppy job. So I'm not going to worry about that white thing there. But if I wanted to do that, I could probably use Auto Mask, get a smaller brush. You know, So I could select that if I wanted to, but I think that's good enough. I select it everywhere else, and I want to bring exposure up a little bit. And I want to, I think, bring clarity down, kind of blur out that water a bit. Maybe texture down a little too. That's a little overdone. But you get the idea, I hope, of how you could use these masks to select very specific parts of the image. And you can see it, it really does it very, very quickly. Now in future videos, I'm going to get a little bit more in depth here. You can see there's an add button. You could add to this. I've just used subtract, but the same uh, options are here under add that are under subtract so you could do that you also if you investigate under these three dots you could see you could intersect the mask with other parts that are selected so you could do different things there and i'll have that in future videos as well but hopefully what i've taught you in this video will get you started using this new masking that is found in lightroom and i uh, again i think it's a major uh, new update it's a clever way to get masking a little smarter in Lightroom without having layers. Because of course, with layers, things are a little more straightforward once you understand layers. But in Lightroom, it was always difficult because there's no layers here. But this is a clever way to do it, and I think they did a really good job with it. So look for future videos where I go in a little more depth on this new masking. Also, I'll have videos where I talk about those other new minor features that are in a Lightroom Classic. There really isn't a lot, but I will do a video on talking about that in the very new, near future. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.